Our next speaker is uh, Mark Webster, store manager of the Makers Emporium. Everything you need to, uh, to furnish your life with a quality range of unique homeware, clothing, jewellery, accessories, artwork, gifts and textiles. Expertly crafted by local designers. That word local again, coming in. Um, based in Rotherham. And I was delighted to see <coughs> Rotherham uh, branding themselves now as the independent alternative, which is great. So, uh, welcome, Matt. Good day. Um, I'll just start on what Claire mentioned earlier about the window display. Um, I started out on something called the Sheffield Showcase Project in Sheffield and there were a lot of boarded up windows and the town, the city centre decided to use that window space uh, to create window displays for people to promote their local businesses um, and we had, we had all the local town centre businesses and we created the window displays for them to promote their businesses um, and they got sales through the window displays and through the visual merchandising. Um, and a lot of people say don't judge a book by its cover, but if you judge a shop by its front cover and its window displays, always utilise your window displays and your visual merchandising because it, it makes a real impact on people coming into the stores. Um, I'm currently manager of the Makes Emporium in Rotherham, um, and the Makes Emporium was funded by the Porter's Pilot Initiative and through the High Street X Fund. It's a collaboration from Town Centre Management the Source Skills Academy and Rotherham Youth Enterprise. Um, in recent years, Rotherham's undergone a huge transformation in order to bring shoppers back to the town centre by offering a unique shopping experience for all. Um, we've seen the renewal uh, of the shopping buzz of old and footfalls you know, really improving at the moment um, with the emphasis on, like we've said, making Rotherham the independent alternative the Makers Emporium is the latest exciting town centre project, project taking the pop-up shop concept to a new level uh, by bringing a new range and a mixture of makers, crafters, local artists and designers to the town trading from a professionally managed retail unit. So they bring their stock to us, we merchandise it, we display it, we do all the handling of it and everything and like uh, Elizabeth was saying about talking about the products that really helps, we talk to customers and we let them know, you know where it was made, how it's made, and it, it just makes a real, a real difference, a real impact. Um, we opened in 2014, and we're officially opened by Brandon Lewis and Mary Portis, um, Brandon Lewis, High Street Minister uh, for High Street Retail. And since opening, we've supported over 55 local businesses, and we currently house 29 local makers. Uh, locals are a massive part of it, like Elizabeth was saying again, uh, anything if you can hammer home but it's made locally it's by local people then that gets a, a real buzz going and we're from we're based in Yorkshire and people just love Yorkshire produce at the moment as well um, like you love your Lancashire stuff we'll, we'll not go to war we'll not go to war um, but people love that Yorkshire sort of feel the Yorkshire sort of it's almost a brand in itself Yorkshire at the moment um, the local makers crafters and designers we sort of give them business support and we help them not be local crafters, local makers, but we try and get them a brand, if you like, and make them have their own brands. Um, we, we give business support, helps, help them set up logos, set up Twitter profiles, Facebook, uh, things that we, you know, they might not be interested in doing at first or they might think it's a bit frightening, but we help set them up with that sort of stuff. Uh, the Makes Emporium Focus is that we're a local store for local people, a handmade for the high street. All items in store are handmade or designed by the local people. Since opening, we've supported two retail apprentices um, and we've had free work placements as well. And we've worked in collaboration with the local college, Rotherham College of Arts and Technology. So we've got their design students uh, doing a lot of design work for us. And obviously, because it's part of their qualifications, it's a way of not having to pay, you know, extortionate prices for like design work and things like that. Um, and they've been really good. We had the media students in and they did a, a video for us, promotional video, and like an advert, if you like, an online advert, and that re worked really, really well. We've also done competitions through things like Facebook and Twitter, 
um, and that's a really good idea for boosting boosting your profile views and boosting up your social media likes and numbers so I'd definitely recommend something like that even something like a retweet and share or anything like that that's really good for your business as well as offering uh, a new shopping experience Meg's Emporium also offers to aim for business support uh, for new upstart businesses as well so people can come to us and they can try uh, different things and we can pay really good rates as well um, we currently have a service charge which varies from 10 to 50 pounds a month and then we take a commission from the makers uh, depending on the sales um, we uh, always say that we make a customer and not a sale we always aim to make the customer's day um, and customer service is a really important aspect of our business uh, every key customer that you keep is a customer less to find and they'll always recommend a friend if you deliver that good service and that's it from me, thank you Thanks for that Matt um, really inspiring as we're getting all the time our next um, guest up is Ashley Sutcliffe, um, based in High Street, Cole, Lancashire. Um, designer trend, lead fashionable homewares, home accessories, decorative items, wallpapers, uh, paints and furniture. Um, ten years of experience in retail and design, so you know exactly what you're doing, training up to master's level. And um, I gather you've got a nickname for Nick Boy. I'll leave you to tell the audience. <laughs> Welcome. I, I had a funny start to, to my retail experience because I didn't expect to do it. I had no idea that I was going to start being a retailer. Um, I was teaching knitting textiles. I was a textile teacher teaching A level students. And um, at the same time, I worked as a furniture, with a furniture retailer. And both of my jobs came to an end within a month of each other, and I was made redundant. And I had 400 quid in my pocket at the end. Once I paid all my bills, I had 400 pounds. I was like, what the hell can I do with 400 pounds that's going to make me do something with my life? So I thought, I can move away, I can move and find a teaching job, I can do something like that, or I can start a shop. And in Colm, where I'm from, it's a lovely town, it's beautiful, great place to live, but there was no shops, there was nothing there, there was no, I couldn't go out and shop for the things that I wanted. So I was forever going to Manchester, Leeds, Liverpool. I thought, I'm going to bring a little slice of that to Cole and see what I can do. So, 400 quid, spent 100 pounds on a till, really stupid thing to do. <laughs> but I thought, it's a shop, we've got to have a till. Um, and then I spent 300 pounds on stock. And I went, oh, I need somewhere to sell stuff. <laughs> Which was, again, a bit of a stupid thing to do. Um, and at the same time, my friend had just opened this really amazing farm shop and he had a little spare space and I said, can I come and sell some stuff with you and just sort of test if my shop idea is going to work? And he said, yeah, go for it. And it was a farm, so people didn't really expect design stuff. I didn't expect to make any money. I didn't expect it to work. But I sold everything that I'd bought, and so I turned my 400 quid into, you know, quite a bit more, and thought, great, let's start a shop. And the brand Live Like The Boy came about because my nickname, my nickname's always been The Boy. It's, my parents have called me that, my friends have called me that, and one, one day we were just having a chat and one of my friends said, I want to live like the boy, and I started a blog, started a website, so in October 2012, I started my online shop, and within about a month of that, I was selling through the farm shop and selling, selling bits and bobs then. Um, one thing that I think is really, really important, and this phrase, this quote was given to me by a friend of mine who is the head buyer for Vivian Westwood, and the physical store has the potential to be the most powerful and effective uh, form of media available to a brand. And I stand by that. If somebody walks into my shop, they know exactly what they're getting, they know exactly what I'm about, they, they know exactly what I'm trying to sell them. But more than that, they get the experience. And just last week, a lady came into my shop and she came in with a wolf t shirt on and a hairspray back. In, and she was sort of like in a scruffs. And I don't judge by appearance, but it was just, she just sort of looked a bit like she'd not quite been prepared to walk in and she sort of like walks around in a bit of an airy fairy way and said it's got a really great energy in here and I thought oh no we've got local nutter <laughs> and then she said I'm, I'm 
I mean my scruffs because I'm decorating and then it sort of like clicked oh that's why you shouldn't judge by the, the book by its cover you know you shouldn't do that and so she said I've got this great barn do you want to come and have a look and you know it's, so she kind of got exactly what I was trying to do about you know having interiors having a shop and doing these things so this is my shop on Common High Street I hate showing what it looks like because it's not quite finished yet but we've kind of been working on it um, and this is earlier this year. On my signage, I've got a, a little sort of graphic of me and my little dog, and everybody in town now knows who we are because we're on the front of the shop. So when they come in, they know they're, they're going to see me, they're going to see the dog because we're always there in the shop together. And I think that's a really important thing to be able to identify who these people are, who you're going in the shop to see, and if you, if you can't do something like that, obviously this is really personal to me, and it's all about me and my story and the way I want to live. And um, if you can't do that, you must make yourself known to your customer. I hate walking into a shop and sort of scanning around and thinking, whose shop is this? Who's, who works here? So that's a really big tip and important point for me. Thankfully, people believed in what I did. <laughs> and Colin had a, a sort of a bit of a resurgence. We had a lot more uh, new shops sort of like following the wake of what I was doing. And uh, Marketing Lancashire started this, uh, well, they did this big feature in the Lancashire Life magazine and online about Colm being the capital of cool of Lancashire and all of my friends went, you bastard, I hope you managed to do that, I hope you got that kind of level of PR and I said, well you've just got to believe in what you do, set your stall out, open your shop, be bricks and mortar, believe in your brand and set up, you know, if you've got that shop then obviously it is a powerful media, you're going to make it work and this is, this is the, the day that I made it because my grandma rang me up and went, oh, are you good? <laughs> My window displays are now sort of legendary in Colm. I don't claim to be the best. I don't. I'm not. I, I offer my service as a window dresser to lots of other businesses, and they, you know, I get. There's not a week goes by they don't get a phone call with somebody saying, "Can you just come down and sort something out?" If it's a couple of a mannequ uh, couple of mannequins in a menswear shop or a full redo of, you know, of a lighting shop, you name. It, I, I get this all the time, um, but they go down really well. A guy walked into the shop and said. Um, You'll never sell out in this shop. And I thought, oh, well, you know, six months of trading, we sold quite a lot of stuff, what's all this about? And he said, you've not got any prices on anything. I said, yeah, but you've just come into the shop to ask me, haven't you? He went, yeah, and I said, right, what do you, what do you want to buy? What are you looking for, you know? Are you, are you wanting to buy the chair, the filing cabinet? Well, actually, I want to buy the filing cabinet. Well, how much is it? Give him a price. Oh, that's better than I thought. Well, there you go, that's why I don't put prices on it. We can surprise you, we can disappoint you, but at least you come into the shop and you, you know, it's dragging people in. So I never put price on anything in my window. I'd rather that it just looks good. Over Christmas, um, I put this starlight in the window, and it cost me a lot of money. And it's something that I sell. I sell lots of different. You can buy them all different shapes and sizes. But the star was um, you could see it right up the high street because we're on a col uh, on a hill in Colm. And because so many people had seen it and kept catching their eye. I literally went for it at the end of Christmas, I thought I was just going like, to sort of sell it, you know, sell it off display or whatever, and I mounted it on a different point in the wall, and now every morning when I walk into the shop, I switch the starlight on, people know that I'm there. So it's quite nice just because well, I've got my name, you know, my, you know, my little star shining every day, and that makes me feel quite comfortable. But it's a really important message to make sure that people know that you're there. So when I open the shop, I have a big planter with a tree inside that's like my A-board. Great tip, if you can't have A-boards, have planters because um, a lot of councils are really sort of pernickety about having their uh, airboards so you can get around it with having props on the street. No, it's a, it's a plant, so it's just you know, making the place look nice. This is, um, oh that one's come out funny as well. There's, this is um, sort of displays inside my shop. Um, so it's just a kind of a, a bit of a sneak peek. Um, and there's the images missing of this one as well. I don't know what's happened, sorry, Mac Hughes, it's probably sort of like compatibility issues. Um, I ran a scheme called One of Twelve, which Elizabeth actually participated in. Um, because I was a new shop, I was really conscious of not being able to afford enough stock to have in and on display at all times. And also really conscious of the fact that I needed to market myself in an innovative way. So I invited 12 different artists to take part in my shop and have a part of the shop where they, were, they had products on display, they got 100% of the money of anything that was sold, didn't charge them a commission, they could just literally have a position in my shop. So it was a bit like sort of um, like group marketing. They, obviously, they were going to tell their friends and family that they were, you know, had stuff in my shop, so they came along. 
and it meant that I knew that there was always something new in the shop. Every single month there was a new collection of something. And actually I took the, uh, I only ended up doing nine because three of the artists and designs that were lined up, um, various things happened that couldn't take part. But out of the nine that I did, I ended up actually buying the stock of four of them and they're now permanent, you know, they're, they're now permanent brands and permanent things that I stock. So it's a great way for me to test the waters with my customers and see what, what people engaged with. But obviously a great marketing tool as well. I absolutely love this leather work, by the way, because I never envisaged it. Um, another black slide, I can't remember what was on there either. And this is um, the last window that display that I did, um, just bright and colourful for summer. Um, but the thing that I wanted to show you about this is the flowers that are on, on here were supplied by a local florist and I just approached them and said, look, I love having things in the window that are alive, plants, flowers. Are you interested in doing a little collaboration? If you bring me flowers, I'll put things, you know, I'll, I mean, I'm quite interested in social media. Um, I'll tweet about your, your flowers, I'll tell everyone on Facebook and I'll put them in my window with a little sign where they came from, but you supply me those flowers, you know, every time I do a window display and they said, that sounds fantastic. So now I get beautiful flowers in my shop and a great window display. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Ash. Really great. Nice to see it. And uh, I'm just um, bowled over, to be honest, about what we can achieve. Uh, our last panellist is uh, Jane Means, who describes herself as designer and wrapping expert. Well, she's a lot more than that. Um, she has workshops in London, Lincoln and Singapore. She has an online store. She's an author, a presenter and a designer and has a global following and uh, really pleased that you could join us. Over to you. Okay. Thank you everyone. I'm just checking how I've got five minutes so I'm going to race through this. Am I okay? Um, I call this the graveyard shift, so it's now my challenge to keep you all awake and um, battle through this. But um, a little bit about myself. I'm sort of half a gift wrapper and half a ribbon designer. And the reason it's split in half is because the gift wrapping side is very, very seasonal and I found I had no work for nine months of the year. So I decided to design my own collections and they're now sort of stocked in stores large and small. And they work very well, they work very well indeed. Um, so a little bit about sort of myself. I work with all brands, large and small. Um, certainly in the last month, I've worked with sort of Aldi on their press launch. I've worked for Yves Saint Laurent, um, Harrods, um, some incredible brands in the last month. But I love a challenge where I go and work for, say, an independent store who give me a budget of £50 and say, Jane, get on with it. That's what I really love. So that's a little bit about me, I've uh, told you that already. Um, I've done a book, so I can now class myself <clears throat> as an author. I um, also don't believe it, a uh, face of scotch tape, so before long you'll see a cardboard cutout in Staples. Stop laughing. <laughs> um, I do BBC uh, radio as well as Create and Craft TV, so I'm out there quite a lot, um, and also on social media, so Ashley, he's a social media god by the way. Okay, so customer experience. I know we've chatted a bit about window displays and how important they are. They are mega important. So if you think of first impressions, it can be what you're wearing when you're going to view a house you're going to buy. Those first impressions are so, so important. And where does gift wrapping come into it? Um, I believe there are many factors which will help you. Um, it entices people into your store, whether it's a physical store or an online store. Um, I also think it increases the value of your product, so done correctly, it can make an item look more expensive than it is. It also makes your customers feel a lot more important, um, because you could have, for instance, a store card um, and say to people, okay, you come in, we'll wrap your gifts for free, it just makes them feel really special. It's an eye-catching feature, um, it's a great thing to spread the word locally. It creates impulse sales. The press love it, especially your local press. And Ashley was talking about local press. And also, it can be done on a budget. Um, I started my business back in 1995 with 100 quid um, from the kitchen table, making handmade greeting cards. Um, before I knew it, I had somebody ringing me up asking to be my agent. And I was watching Coronation Street with a mug of tea making cards. I thought, are you serious? Fast forward 20 years, I'm still going. Great. 
So, obviously it entice people into your shop with a shop window, which we've been going on about anyway. Um, if you are wanting to start a wrapping service, bring that wrapping theme into the window. So all those sort of items in the window there could be just empty boxes. Um, all the boxes I've got on my stand today are all empty boxes. I've missed a trick where I should be wrapping my own Christmas presents and uh, doing it beforehand. Also, the exterior could go slightly mad. I'm not saying do this, but um, I found this... Uh, when I was working at Ralph Lauren in Bond Street last year, I looked out the window at my little wrapping station and Cartier had wrapped their building up. So this is a picture on my Instagram page. And everybody loved it. It was a real talking point, but I'm not saying wrap your shop up. Um, just simple props is really what you need. Um, again, back to the empty boxes, wrapping them up. Great little encouraging uh, impulse buys there. So it just, you know, people know that you do a wrapping service, whether you charge for it or it's free. People, especially the fellas, I'm afraid to say at Christmas, oh, go on, I'll give you all my Christmas shopping and uh, can you wrap it as well. If you sell gift wrap, really important to use it in your display, either sort of for sort of decorative items like this or wrapping empty boxes again. And if you do sell gift, gift boxes, do actually dress one up as a display because as soon as people see that and you know, the things that you can do, it again just creates more sales. If you do mail order, many of you do, it's really nice to have an option where you can do sort of a gift wrapping service. I always think you have to have a one-upmanship on your competitors and a gift wrapping service is perfect. Have also a sort of a very quick snapshot of what that item could look like. Um, it could be just for something like three pounds as a, as a price or they can buy the materials if you say stock gift boxes and wrap and ribbon. They could buy those goods and click the free gift wrapping option. So effectively you're offering a free gift wrapping service, but they have to uh, buy the materials and that works really well as well. Um, so if you want to start a gift wrapping service, I'm aware that I've got so little time. If you go over to my blog, I've done a huge blog post about pricing, marketing, social media, you name it. It's all on there, so you can find it on the janemeansblog.com. Budget gift wrapping, this is where I come into my element. I started off back in 95 working in a florist and I said to my boss at the time, can we do a gift wrapping service? I had this real passion and we had the brown paper, it was back in the days of uh, dried flower arrangements, that's how long ago it was. We'd got the raffia, we'd got the brown paper and we'd got the broken dried flowers on the floor. So obviously I'd pick the dried flowers up, give them a... Uh, tie them onto gifts, it cost nothing. And then people started coming for miles because it was a free gift wrapping service. You could also go down the paper bag avenue and um, make it quite bespoke. So with that one there, I've just folded the top over, um, added a doily, hole punch, tag. People love it. And it's, you know, it literally is pence per gift. I won't say which high street retailer I work with, but they give me a budget of 23 pence per gift to work with. They then charge the customer pounds. So your toolkit, £50 is really all you need. I know when people have come on uh, either my course or I've gone into shops, um, the biggest mistake people make is they go completely over the top buying all this packaging and they've got far too much and they've got branded everything. So they've got tissue, ribbon, tags, paper, the lot. You only need one branded thing on it. Just keep it very, very simple. Um, the rest of it you can buy from wholesalers. You could even go to a pound shop and buy it. And when I've worked in Selfridges and there's been a, a luggage promotion, I thought, crikey, I've got all these awkward shapes to be wrapping with my team. And I've walked off to Mar Morrison's or Asda, gone and bought every red paper tablecloth there is, taken it out of the packaging, made a nice little stack of wrapping and Mrs Selfridge comes around, oh Jane, I love that bespoke packaging. And I thought, if only you knew where this was an hour ago. So you can get away with it. Cellophane, if you are wrapping awkward shapes, cellophane, tissue, netting, paper tablecloths, vital. They just mould around the objects really, really easily. Um, poor gift wrapping, we've all been there, haven't we? Christmas Eve, too much sherry and the Christmas CD on and we're wrapping something up and it's, it's carnage. What I would say is if you're wrapping a box, don't use that much paper. Don't have so much paper you're struggling to fold it. Um, certainly in my wrapping experience, I get to this sort of stage where it's all pretty much perfect. People are really impressed by it and I think, well, I've not even put the ribbon or the trimmings on it yet. Um, so it's just really nice if you can add a ribbon and even just a small decorative element. So it could be a pine cone out of your local florist, f f forest even, or florist. Um, some, you know, some holly out of your garden, some sticks. It doesn't really cost anything to do it. 
If you're no good at tying bows, use washi tape. It's, it's everywhere. So you walk around, certainly DP1, there's loads of stands now doing washi tape. And it's just a bit more fun as well. Festive adornments, you can tie in, obviously, you know, bits and pieces out of your garden. I would say holly, bay leaves, ivy leaves, laurel, they're all really good and they will last a day or two tied onto a gift. Otherwise, sticks, they're really good to tie for, for Christmas as well. Um, if you add ribbon to a product, that again adds uh, just a bit more of a sort of a luxury element to it. So with here, I was doing a, a massive hamper job in uh, London and every product that went into the hamper had ribbon tied around it and it just added that sort of more luxury element. Carry bags, decorate your carry bags. So if you're thinking, I'd like to make the customer feel really valued, but I don't want to spend the money and I haven't got the time, just a bit of extra sort of ribbon tied onto a carrier bag makes all of the difference. And this one here, I've really pushed the boat out. I've bought um, bags with a print on and I've tied in some fresh lavender. You could use artificial lavender as well. Um, if you're on a budget, scour shops in January with broken wreaths, garlands, you name it, sales. TK Maxx is a great one. And they'll often sell garlands that are broken for about a fiver. Well, you chop all the bits off and you could probably get 200 little decorations to do this. Clear packaging, it's a great way of displaying your product and I do tend to find as soon as you put something in cellophane, it seems to sell the product, but don't do this well in advance because it does collect the dust. What else have we got? So marketing, um, great way about marketing. I love PR and marketing. I'm, I'm constantly on social media. Um, obviously advertise it on your website. Um, because of the SEO as well. Social media, I've been on quite a lot of courses and I realise the importance of social media. And I love Twitter because I can be on the bus or you know, walking back to my stand and I've just tweeted you know, what I've done and where I'm going. And that can be done in 10 seconds. I'm a seriously busy lady. So for me, social media, Twitter I do, Instagram I do because it's very quick. Um, things like Facebook I have to pass on to other people because it is a bit more in depth. Also things like you know carrier bags, you could have um, carrier bags printed. I know I realise there's a big minimum order. So get stickers done. Just get a graphic design student from your local college, design some stickers. You can get as you know as little as hundred stickers printed, not very much money, pennies. Um, also graphics in the window, that doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You could print something out on your own PC. I'm not saying just stick it in the window with scotch tape, but pop it in a photo frame, make it look quite bespoke. Um, and also those sort of plastic window graphics, they're not a lot of money, £20 if that. Have a display of wrapped gifts, um, shout about it with your local press. <clears throat> when you do work with your press, make sure you make them feel special. So, you know, little giveaways. I always say, come, come round, have a coffee, come and get some ribbon, help yourself. They love it. Um, word of mouth, so let your customers do your talking. Whenever we're featured in the press, what we do is we don't have a press cutting agency. We say to our customers, if you see us in a newspaper or a magazine and it's not on our press page, if you tell us, we'll give you a £10 voucher to spend. And they're like, brilliant. So they're now our eyes and ears for the, for the company. Shopping events, really good way of getting your customers involved. It doesn't cost any money to have you know, some mulled wine, a few little nibbles, um, and probably a 10% discount. Those sales are going to really, really help. So pricing options, you've got a few options. You can either have it free, don't have it free for all, whatever you do. Because I did a bookshop um, gift wrapping service for free and kids were coming in having bags of crisps wrapped. It was a bloody nightmare. <laughs> so do have restrictions, you know, two products only and then you've got to buy it in the shop. Um, you can have an event where it's uh, free gift wrapping. Um, that's quite good if one member of staff's good at wrapping but you're not, make sure they're in. Um, have an incentive, so minimum spend of £10, you get free wrapping, or you can charge for it. Um, but I would say start off with the £3 mark or thereabout. That is all on that uh, blog post that I was talking to you um, about. You can obviously get some training. That is quite a good idea to get some training. You can go onto YouTube, you can go onto courses, which we run. Um, if you want to come on a course, I'll be glad to give you a 10%. Um, and also a lot of my work is corporate training, so I will go into a business, large and small. Um, I will not only do a wrapping service for say a couple of hours at the end of the day, but I'll train the staff up and do all sorts of, of bits and pieces. So wrapping up, excuse the pun. <laughs> I've also got a book um, and a DVD and I'm over at DP152, there's the website. Thank you very much indeed and please come and see me if you've got any questions. Thank you.